Hello everybody and welcome to Unity of Las Vegas. Today we begin a three-week series entitled Sacred Places in Liminal Spaces. And it's going to be all about how we begin to navigate this auspicious time in history in which we live. This time where we are really between worlds, between old structures that are beginning to fall apart and new ones that are yet to be. So today, we're going to do a very strange thing. We're going to begin in the middle. So Bayo Akomolafe says, everything begins in the middle. There are no beginnings that appear unperturbed, pristine, and without hauntings. And there are no endings that are devoid of traces of new events yet to happen. The middle isn't just the space between things. It's the world and its ongoing practices of worlding itself. So today we're going to bring our minds and hearts to this place between forms, where one way of being is ending and the next is beginning. All the places in life that are inside of a cocoon. This place where the eye does not see. So what a completely odd thing to do, right? especially since most of us are middle adverse. We don't like coming in in the middle of a movie. We don't know what's going on in there, and we definitely can't control it. We really want to press fast forward on this stage. So why should we go there? So there are two things actually that make me really excited about this particular time. One is that when we look around, we can really see that we are swimming in this in-between world. If we look at our political systems, our educational systems, the way that we have been with our families and relationships, we can see that we are in a mass scale transition. We really are currently living in a cocoon phase. Secondly, I'm really excited about this time because we're here. Of all the people that are choosing to be here at this time. So if you believe that we live in a universe where there are no accidents and there are no victims, then clearly we are the ones. And I have so much hope for the planet because of us. It's like at some point before we were incarnated, we all decided this is the time for us to really be there. We have something unique to offer the world that nobody else has. And so, if you are watching this video, chances are you are one of these people. And all of us have chosen at this time to not only be here, but to be awake. Now, to be awake is to bring a sense of presence to all that we say and do. To bring our presence is to see the sacred in everything. So Cynthia Bougeot talks about this as calling forth the names of God. And she says, the names of God lie coiled within the physical forms of things. Our particular and uniquely human task is to spring the trap and set them free. So today I have three invitations for you. And the first one is this presence, to really totally be present, to be totally with this amazing time. I know there's a tendency for us to want to pull back a little bit from everything that is going. But right now, the invitation really is to really lean in, to have eyes wide open, to have hearts wide open. David White in his book, Consolations, has a beautiful essay called Silence. And in that he says, reality met on its own terms demands absolute presence and absolute giving away, an ability to live on equal terms with the fleeting and the eternal the hardly touchable and the fully possible, a full bodily appearance and disappearance, arrested giving in and giving up, another identity, braver, more generous, and more here than the one looking hungrily for the easy, unearned answer. So we are really abiding in this messiness. We have this invitation to really be with, to allow it to remake us, 
to give us new eyes so that when we move forward into the new solution appropriate for what is to come. We're invited, as Bayo Akomulafi says, to live inside of the cracks. He says, do not pray exclusively to the ancestors of the land. Make room also for the spirits of the fault line, the new gods that scream through the cracks with the first musical notes of worlds to come. So I invite you right now just to take a breath and close your eyes. And bring to mind something that is like this for you, something that is between worlds, something that is an open question. It could be a condition or a relationship or something that is in the world, something that is unfinished. And I want you just to allow that to be and to be present with it, to be abiding with it heart open, eyes open, and just breathe inside of this for just a moment. My second invitation for you today is to tend the imaginal cells. So I had the privilege of meeting Barbara Marks Hubbard many years ago at Renaissance Unity, and she is just a complete bubble of light. Um, and she really has a very unique personality all the way up into her upper 80s. She was just vibrant and alive. And so she has a story, it's really the story of the uh, caterpillar butterfly, but she really focuses on something else that she calls the imaginal cells. So I was going to paraphrase this story for us, but I actually found a written transcript of her telling a portion of this story. So I, I would like to read the transcript to you so that you can get not only the information, but feel the heart and the soul of this amazing woman that walked the earth, Barbara Marks Hubbard. The imaginal cells. Yes, well, this is a great story in the caterpillar to the butterfly. So an imaginal cell enters into the body of this bloated caterpillar. You could relate that to our culture. It's currently, actually, they call it an imaginal disc. And the amazing thing about these imaginal discs is they're coated with the butterfly they're about to build, but they have never seen a butterfly and they don't know it. The other thing is that the culture of the caterpillar is about to destroy the imaginal cells because they look like they're genetically different, and they are. So here's a really interesting thing is that in the body of the caterpillar comes a new culture coded in people that are slightly different coded than the caterpillar. So what happens is at first the caterpillar tries to kill them. And in our culture, we can see some of our great imaginal cells that have been killed, whether it be Gandhi or Martin Luther King, and many of them, John F. Kennedy, many of our great pioneer imaginal cells building a new culture were destroyed by the old culture. But this didn't stop the proliferation of the imaginal cells. So what's happening now, I believe, is we're coming to the point where the bloated body of the caterpillar actually, ultimately, cannot survive the way it's going. Meanwhile, what's really interesting is that the imaginal cells coated with the part of the butterfly that are to build. It is what we are calling new humans or new cells in the body of the caterpillar. So that's Barbara. So I invite you now just to close your eyes again and bring to mind this situation, this relationship that is unfinished, that's in the middle. See inside of this special condition that you're holding in your heart, these imaginal cells. And just knowing that these are carrying all of the DNA of what is about to emerge from this situation what this situation will look like on the other side of its development. So just to take a moment just to breathe in and just hold in your imagination this amazing possibility for your condition. So the third invitation that I have for you today 
I'm calling love's final articulation. So I've had two opportunities in my life to explore this. And it's a type of, of groundedness. And I experienced this through Araya Mountain Dreamer's poem called The Invitation, where she asked the question, what sustains you when all else falls away? And it began to, to work something inside of me. You know, what if everything changed that I, that I really am holding on to and attached to? What if the people that I love leave or die? What, what, what is it that's even more grounding than the things and the people that I love in my life. And the second time that I came across this was very recently when I was in a class with Jeff Carrera. And um, it was about the artists of possibility. And he asked us to find out what is our final articulation. And it brought me to that same place again. What is it that, that holds me when everything falls away? What is it that is non-negotiable? that science can't prove or disprove, that conditions in my, in my life cannot change? What is it that is so grounding? And what I came up with really is that it's love. That for me, no matter what is happening, love is my final articulation. And so I'm offering that now as a possibility for us to really embrace during these times and to have the type of grounding that allows great change to happen all around us, but still we can be really centered and present. And also this, this word articulation, this ability that we have through language to create something living and beautiful in the world, I think is really important too. It goes along with the word logos, and it also reminds me of um, in the Bible, in John, where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So I invite you again just to close your eyes and allow this grounded love to totally permeate your condition. This love that is so grounded, that is your final articulation. Let this articulation be alive and creative. But not only are you grounded in this love, but it is bringing forth the very world that all of our hearts long for. Just take a moment now just to totally saturate this condition with this love. So I invite you now just to be in all three of these invitations, just feeling this deep sense of presence with everything that is happening right now. Eyes wide open, heart wide open, totally being with. And the second, really imagining new possibilities, really being with these imaginal selves and being willing just to think about and to feel what new possibilities can come forth? What is just waiting to be birthed? And then the third invitation is to really let all of this be totally grounded in love. And in fact, just imagine just the love flowing through your whole being and grounding itself into the core of the earth. So the final thing I'd like to leave you with is a story by, uh, about Bio Okomolafe was one of my heroes on the planet right now. And uh, he was invited to have a beautiful, really beautiful position with a particular university. And he decided after thinking for quite a while that he wouldn't accept the position. But instead of saying, uh, thank you very much, um, but I have made other plans, this is his response. Libidinal flows in the world urge me towards unprecedented ways of organizing and acting and thinking with the world. My place is in the elsewheres that have no name yet. And so I absolutely loved that response and uh, became so inspired by this place that he referred to as the elsewheres that have no name yet. 
that I decided actually to write a poem about it. And it's called The Elsewheres Are Calling. The elsewheres call us to be the living relationship between cosmic polarities, between mortality and immortality, between the possible and the impossible, between stasis and emergence, existing within a larger, more elegant embrace. This call is an invitation to meet the post-human of us, an appointment in some dimension of time and space yet to create itself. It is discovering the peace to be found within the leap off the precipice and then the surprise of flying. It is the spirit of an explorer risking death in search of Earth's secret places yet to see a human face. It is the heart that knows the sweetness of life that can only be tasted after a thousand heartbreaks, the capaciousness of soul. It is knowing the weight of one's own spiritual gravity in the world, honed through rugged 3D encounter. The kiss of heaven and earth is not gentle and soft. It is treading lightly in the realm of form, shape-shifting the playfulness of solidity and fluidity, dying and being reborn in fullness and emptiness. It is gaining the trust of the manifest and the unmanifest to be their conscious conduit, their living portal. The elsewhere is creating us a longing to hear their name, though spoken in a wordless language, some kind of inaudible faint whisper that dissolves in the wind again and again. So I leave you with these thoughts and invite you just to embrace them with your mind and your heart and your whole being. I am in so much gratitude to be on this hero's journey with you. Many blessings. <laughs>